What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to lesson number 21 for A Course in Creativity, as promised. Uh, this is uh, on being the bridge. And for A Course in Miracles workbook lesson, this is I am determined to see things differently. What I really like about this lesson is that it helps us to understand that the point of of sitting with ourselves and, and to really sit in that um, space of peace inside and to cultivate that is not from a place to run. I think that we need to get away from this idea of meditation as being a place that we escape to because it too will become something that we need to escape from if, if we're using it in that energy. And this is really about uh, learning to see things differently and not just externally, not just being open to possibilities, but this is also about opening up to ourselves and seeing ourselves differently. I had an experience this week where I was feeling very quite unsettled and, you know, it, I had... Um, you know, a lot of things coming in uh, energetically speaking and it just felt like the world was quite loud and uh, anxiety was high and so I went for a walk and then uh, I went to a conservation area in the end and I was going up this steep incline so I was trying to discharge the energy that had built up in my body so that I could just settle in here, right? So I, I ran up this super steep incline and got to the top and uh, caught my breath a little bit and um, just sat and, and listened. The lessons of that day were really about facing fears uh, about what will people think if, if they if they know that I, you know, that I talk to spirit. What will they know? What will they think? When we sit with the things that we're most afraid of other people seeing about us and we just sit with that and don't run from it, right? I felt like spirit was pushing, just pushing, like laying on the doorbell of that feeling, of that worry that I had of you know and, and it's nonsensical like this channel existed before the other day so um, technically it doesn't really matter because it's already information that's out there um, but it was just such a nonsensical thing that I, I knew it was something I really needed to sink into so sinking into that for me was um, revelatory because it's like we realize that we really do a good job of running from ourselves and i'm not just talking about putting substances or stuff or you know it, it's not just about the the things that we put uh, in our bodies to escape this isn't just about escaping or escapism so when i got to the top of the 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 little um i guess lookout uh, i just sat down on, on a rock that had a jagged enough edge that provided a seat and while i was just watching the clouds i kept thinking not running from this and not even asking what is it here to teach me not rushing to that place because that too becomes an escape right it's like the search for that dopamine hit of how is this going to make sense and how is this all going to come together and how 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 right so it's it's like how is all of this no just pause just be with it because in that space sometimes for the first time that's where we see ourselves we meet ourselves and i'm not talking about the the you that exists in the world from an ego perspective i'm talking about the you the you that exists in this moment, in this present moment, okay, in this present moment, that that space within you, that that tiny human, <laughs> that tiny human that exists in all of us, and you meet them there in that fear of being seen or being wrong or getting it right, to the extent that that becomes the goal. Like it, it's you know when you meet them in that space, instead of pushing them away through behaviors like running and and running to a meditation, asking what is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? Because you're not actually interested in learning in that case. You're not actually interested in the answer. You're interested in the process. And that's where we, we become uh, fixed in our in our ways of searching, right? Not just because we're not searching for an answer in that case. We're searching for the process to relieve the pain. So when we just sit in that and see ourselves and we see we don't see the the memories or things that caused that little person to be all of those feelings we just sit with the feelings and hold space for them right we hold space for them so when i got to where i was needing to go that day uh i admittedly i got there and i i started crying i had burst into tears it was it was just emotions coming up right we were processing all the time and the person that met me one of my friends with that was there uh ended up hugging me and and um it reminded me of just that that feeling of comfort and just the tenderness of of uh, that embrace and the ways that we are present for others but how we so seldom do that for ourselves right i had started to you know once i had the initial release of emotion so i you know my friend kept she had her hand on my back and was just 
rubbing my back, you know, and that's like touch is a love language and it helps me to process emotion. Um, so it's important, but what's more important in that moment to me was that I, it was like a, a, a moment where I was really able to see that, you know, how many times do we show up for ourselves in this way? She wasn't demanding anything of my emotions that they need to be something different than they were. She wasn't demanding anything like that. It was just a release of energy and emotion and she recognized that and, and was just there to support that process. She didn't say there, there, don't cry. She didn't say, don't cry, don't be sad. Don't, you know, don't worry. Um, in the moment that those emotions were expressed, it was just, I'm here, I'm here. So how often do we do that for ourselves? And in that place, in that quiet place where we're not trying to do anything to change the feeling that we're having, the response that we're having, and we're just letting it be. When we have this, this tender place in us that we find and meet and don't try to do anything with and just say, it's okay that you're showing up right now as you are in the moment that you are, right? This is a way of saying, I am determined to see things differently because we, we are being the bridge. We're being the bridge to allow, to allow things to come in, but we're also allowing things to leave too. We're allowing things to leave because we're not hanging on. We're not hanging on to this idea that it should be any other way. And in that, in that way too, we're not punishing ourselves. We're not punishing ourselves for the, having a reaction that differs from the one that we held up here as the, the, the goalpost uh, to which we, and, and the yardstick to, up to which we should measure ourselves and our worth as a result. So for the first time, we have the opportunity to sometimes meet this person and not abandon them, to not abandon the tiny human inside you, to not abandon them. What does that feel like? Because then when you realize that, you understand that you're never going to abandon yourself again. And I, you know, the process became more illuminated to me in a step-by-step -step way where we talk about don't abandon yourself. You know, you see memes about it online all the time. But what does that actually mean? What does the process feel like in your body? It means recognizing that you're, you know, I, I wear my Fitbit, recognizing that your heart rate might be like racing, just dropping into your body regardless of that feeling and dropping into your body regardless of that fear and dropping into your body because you need to befriend it you need to befriend it right i made a, a i said once that um bodies are, are funny because they're they're just vessels with fun buttons <laughs> and in a way that they are and that's not to speak down to them but there's also a way that you know and combining that knowledge with the fact that we are spiritual beings but we're also having a human experience and it's important to embrace that as much as the spiritual one because then it can become a huge block if we do anything different because it's just everything getting lodged in our bodies everything getting lodged inside right and and then things can't move and the least of which is emotion uh, energy can't move in that instance right so it just gets stuck it gets stuck and that tiny human inside you needs you to see them, needs you to see them. Even when you feel like you, you know, it's not about deserving. It's about feeling so much fear about doing that. What are you going to find when you just sit with yourself? What are you going to find? Will all the things that people told you about yourself be true? I don't know. The only way to find out is to sit. The beauty of this is that the part of you that was feeling alone is not alone anymore because you've met that part and you've just sat with it. And for me, it was just fears of people saying, you know, oh, you shouldn't be doing that where you're reading tarot <laughs> with a master's degree. Okay, well, you're making great use of it. Um, you know, judgments that people have, they're so petty. At the end of the day, how does all of this come together and, and truly matter? Because I can guarantee you that at the end of someone's life, they're not going to be thinking about what path you should have taken. They're going to be questioning whether the one they took was right or not. So this is the power of deeply meeting yourself on the path. Deeply meeting yourself and not looking away. Not looking away because the reasons that we do look away and that we become determined to not see things ourselves among them differently is because we're afraid of what we might find there. Will I be enough? Am I going to be good enough? Were all the things that they said about me in grade school true? Um, you know, are, am, you know, are all of the beliefs that people have about how my body should be real? Um, is, is that true? What if it is true? Well, what if it is? What if it is? 
Sit with it for just a second. What if it was? Don't run from it. What if it was true? What are you left with then? Because then you stop running from the thing. It's like a monster in the closet that's hiding somewhere, ready to spring out and go, boo. But there's no, it's, it's just a jump scare, right? It's just a jump scare. So if there's nothing to really fear in that, if there's nothing to truly fear, then what are we all that worried about finding? Because usually that tiny human just needs to know that you care enough not to, to dip <laughs> when things get hard inside. And that's symptomatic of a heart space that's open, that you can do that, that you can sit in that place because it means that you have the capacity to hold space for yourself and you can do that for other people too, right? And this isn't do this so that you are emotionally available. That's not, it's not a benchmark like that. This is about recognizing your humanness and holding space for every single inch of that and finding beauty in that and not running. So what if, what if people say is true? Oh, you're, you're crazy because you talk to spirit, because you read tarot, because you have, you know, clairaudient abilities, because <laughs> you, you know, it, it's like none of it matters. None of it matters. None of it does, because all it really is is just people yelling at each other, but just being yourself. And it's not about just being yourself as in be who you are today and, and love your traits and all of these things, because that's it, that, to me, it's like the ego there that, that a lot of people get, you know, hung up on and mixed up in. This isn't about um, looking at your ego identity and saying yes to that. This is about looking at the depth of who you are in the moments where you don't want to look at yourself and saying, I love you. I love you. And I'm not running from you. You could say I'm not running from you anymore if you have been. But it's that deep awareness and it's where we start to rub our own back and hold ourselves and make space for us, for every, every inch and corner. And in those moments when you start to show up for yourself like that, it goes so far beyond. It goes so far beyond because then it means that you're able to rely on yourself for those things and it sort of equalizes the way that you can show up in relationships, in friendships, in family relationships, because it means that you're not relying on other people to comfort you. You're not relying on other people to um, agree with you. You're not relying on other people to fill a, a laundry list of duties and obligations in their movement, in their orbit around you and vice versa. In that moment, you're free. You're free to be yourself because you've met yourself. And that means that you can meet people too. And the ones that have met themselves will recognize that peace in you. They will recognize that. This lesson, if we let it, also can clarify the things that, and the ways that we abandon ourselves, right? The ways that we abandon ourselves through different processes or ego identities. So I think about some of the things that I've had opportunities to do where I've abandoned myself along the way, right? I, I abandoned myself along the way. Uh, because, for example, well, I, you know, I, I had the opportunity to work with politicians. Ego importance. It's ego importance, right? And you can use those things to justify why you shouldn't sit with yourself in those fears. Why you shouldn't sit and just meet yourself in the discomfort. And it's like calling yourself back home. It's calling yourself back home, right? Thinking about all of these these sort of touch points and places where you can abandon yourself with the conviction that what's outside of you is more important to listen to than the part of you that's fearful or the part of you that's worried or feeling feeling ashamed sometimes for no reason but right it's it's tapping into our our possibility and our potential again and not potential in terms of look at all the things that we can make now that we're healed it's about look at all of the ways that we can truly see other people because we've met ourselves as deeply. You know, that there's that quote that people can only meet you as deeply as they've met themselves. And I think that this has a lot to do with it, right? When's the last time that you felt really anxious and 
instead of running to you know exercise or work for me it was a lot of work right throwing myself into work as long as I was working throwing myself into work then it would mean that I, I didn't have to you know it mean you know I could have my ego stroked I could be important <laughs> I could have titles I could you know have put all these things on a resume and all that we really have to do is be determined to see things differently about it because it's where we meet ourselves on the path and all of these these ego identities become you know sort of trophies in this trophy case that justify the leaving behind of yourself the abandoning of yourself in their pursuit as though that will make something better that will solve a problem that will fix something when it absolutely won't it just won't and then we begin to see these things more clearly and when we see these processes outside of us we understand that those are the times where we may need to be more aware of ourselves and the ways that we give up on ourselves or we abandon ourselves because that's also where we are okay with other people doing the same thing where we look at others and because we are so accustomed to abandoning ourselves and not sitting with and meeting ourselves we don't know what it feels like to be shown up for we don't know what it feels like to have someone see us. So we say, well, it's more important that I have this experience and, you know, it. I can't really do that because uh, I can, you know, do this, that or the other thing because I have to focus on, you know, this, this particular role or this thing and people won't like it if I do that. People won't like it if I read tarot. People won't really be okay if I talk about spiritual concepts and things. People won't be all right if I do channeling you have to meet yourself because those are the places where you're going to abandon yourself i use examples that i've had to work through in starting up this channel and otherwise so you have to really meet yourself deeply and it's not it's not about you know i'm gonna put the the cosmic quarter in the gumball machine and then i will dispense with the gumball <laughs> it's not like that it's not doing it for the thing it's doing it because what we're aiming for is a higher level of consciousness and this is kind of how we get there and that's what A Course in Miracles to me represents in many ways is this working through of the, the blocks that we put in our minds, not just to a, access a higher consciousness, but the blocks that we put in our minds that prevent things like love finding us, real satisfaction, fulfillment finding us, perception. That is why perception is so important here. When we admit that we don't know what something means and we're willing to be wrong and admit when we're wrong and admit when we're wrong, right? That's the other part. And because wrong is just, it's a concept, but what's more important is that we meet ourselves and others in a way that recognizes that maybe we didn't get it right. Because it's not about being wrong. It's about the recognition that repair is needed, right? It's a, the, the recognition that repair is needed. So. That to me is what this represents as well, is, is perception. When we don't know what something means, it's so easy for us to get lost in identifications and to run to different solutions when all we need to really do is just sit with that part of us, to sit with that part of us that just needs to be seen. It just needs to be seen. That is lesson 21 for A Course in Creativity. And my friends, where if this, if this resonated or it was helpful or you liked it, please like and subscribe. Uh, and wherever this finds you on the time-space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, I hope that it finds you very well, my darlings. Take care. <laughs>